Are you trying to break generational curses? Or do you want to continue being fearful and scared and insecure and second guessing yourself and not feeling good enough? Setting boundaries is hard and setting boundaries with family is harder, at least in my opinion. It's been a struggle. So today I wanted to talk about how to do that. Where's my super suit? Okay, so first we need to talk about what a boundary is and what it is not. A boundary is not you trying to control someone else. A boundary is not you trying to make someone else do something that they don't want to do or that they're not going to do. It's not you requiring anything of anyone else. Boundaries, they're all about you. Boundaries are all about you. Boundaries are essentially guidelines that you put in place for how you would like people to treat you. We'll talk a little bit later about what that looks like. On my journey to learning to have boundaries, I also often felt like I was being mean. Like having boundaries made me an asshole. That's part of my recovering people pleaser side. Part of me knew that what I was doing was healthy and it was necessary and that it would help me accomplish my goals in the long run. Some of my biggest goals are just being a healthy person, having a healthy family unit, raising healthy kids in the future when I have them, right? So why did I feel like such an asshole when all I was doing was attempting to be a healthy person? The answer in that lies with the people who are around you, more than likely. If you are someone who considers yourself to be breaking generational curses, you're maybe the, one of the first people, if not the first person in your family to work on communicating in a healthy way, living in a healthy way, existing, just being a healthy human being, then when you break apart from that, when you do something different than the current accepted family dynamic, if you operate outside of what is usually accepted in your family, then you're gonna feel like the asshole because you're gonna be made to feel like the asshole. People are gonna be looking at you like, you're crazy, like you're rude, like you're mean, like I cannot believe you would talk to me like that. I would not be I cannot believe that you would speak to me like that. I would never speak to my mother like that. I would never speak to my in-law like that. I would never speak to my aunt, uncle, whatever the fuck like that. And you're going to be sitting there like, I thought I communi myself, communicated myself pretty respectfully what did I say that was disrespectful and if you are already a, a people pleaser and you are an overthinker and you're the kind of person that goes and replays conversations you're gonna be replaying these conversations saying what did I say wrong what did I say that was so bad probably nothing babes you probably didn't say anything that was that bad what happened was they just didn't like what you had to say so they threw a fit about it obviously if you're doing this work you have enough self-awareness to know if you really did say something sideways. But more than likely you didn't if you're just setting a healthy boundary. So that's why you feel like an asshole when you're setting boundaries. It's not because you're being an asshole. Communicating assertively is a necessary part of being a human being. It is a necessary part of building your self-esteem and your self-confidence. Keep doing it. Like forget what other people think. If they think that you're an asshole for it, then they're probably not someone that you need around in your life if you would like to be a healthy person and if you would like to thrive in your life. So just keep that in mind anytime you're setting boundaries and it feels uncomfortable, okay? Before I get into the method of setting boundaries, I wanna talk about the mindset that you need to have when you're doing it because this is make or break. This is what is going to allow you to set these boundaries and move forward and be a healthy person as opposed to just sliding back into what feels easy and what's normal to you, which is probably people pleasing and bending over backwards to make other people happy. I need you to know that you are not a child anymore. If you're a big girl, big boy, you pay your own bills, you go to your job, you make your money, you take care of yourself, you live under your own roof or with a roommate or whatever, you are not a child. You don't have to put up with people talking to you any kind of way, treating you any kind of way. Not that that's acceptable for children. It's not acceptable to treat children poorly, 
But the difference between child version of you and grown version of you is that you have the power to remove yourself from the situation. You have the power to speak up for yourself. You do not have to say, stay stuck. You are not dependent on this person as a caregiver anymore. You are not dependent on this person emotionally. You don't, you don't have to be dependent on this person emotionally. You don't have to be dependent upon them for anything. And they are not entitled to you. They're not entitled to your time, to your space, to your energy. They're not entitled to shit, okay? So I need you to understand this when we're talking about setting boundaries because if you're operating from the little kid version of you and not the grown healing version of you, the powerful version of you, then this is not gonna work. It's not going to work. You're not even going to find the courage to do it because setting boundaries, it takes courage. It just does. Especially when you were raised in a household that made you think you were not allowed to have thoughts, opinions, boundaries. If you were raised in a household like that, which I'm guessing you are because you're here, then this is going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be scary and it's going to take courage. And you're going to need to put your big girl panties on and do it anyways. I don't know what else to tell you, okay? Just remember, your life is yours. Nobody else gets to tell you how to live your life. Your life is yours to thrive in. Your life is yours to fuck up. Whatever you want to do with it, it's yours to do because it's your life. You're going to make your mistakes. Everybody else who, who's older or whatever, who thinks that they know everything and can tell you what to do, they made their mistakes. And it's not their place to project their experiences onto you. It's okay for you to live your life, okay? So we talked about the mindset that you need to have. Let's jump into the methods of actually setting boundaries. What does it look like to set a boundary, okay? So we're gonna get a little bit deeper into what a boundary is. I set boundaries in two parts. Part one is kind of a cause and effect, and part two is, is an if-then, okay? So part one goes like this. When you did this thing, it made me feel this way. When you did this thing, cause, it made me feel this way, effect. So when you called me this name, it made me feel less than. When you ignored me when I was speaking to you, it hurt my feelings. So when you did this, it made me feel this. This first step involves sharing about yourself and how you are feeling. It requires vulnerability, okay? It's not pointing the finger and said, you did this, it's saying, when you said this thing, it, I made it mean or it made me feel this way. That's part of why setting boundaries in a healthy way takes courage. Because if you want to set boundaries in a way that allows for the possibility of an ongoing relationship with someone, which is why we want to set healthy boundaries, right? It's so that we can have healthy relationships with other people, not so we can isolate ourselves from other people. If you want to set boundaries in a way that allows you to potentially maintain a relationship with someone, then you need to make sure that they understand how their actions are impacting you and how their actions are making you feel because they may not understand that. They may, but they may not understand that. And people don't just automatically know and understand everything about you just because you feel like they should. You have to communicate. You have to advocate for yourself. You have to use your words. Because again, you're not a child anymore. So use your big girl words and explain how you're feeling and how you were impacted by what they did, right? The next step is the if then statement. So if you do this, then I will respond by doing this. If you call me out of my name, then I will respond by walking away. That's your boundary. That's not you telling them, don't call me names. That's saying, if you choose to engage in this behavior, I will choose to disengage from you. I will choose not to engage with you. Boundaries that I've recently been setting is, if you are unwilling to have healthy conflict, if you are unwilling to have a conversation with me when I'm sharing with you that something that you did or said hurt my feelings, if you're unwilling to speak with me so that you can understand me and so that I can understand you, then we have nothing to talk about. There is no relationship without healthy conflict. 
Therefore, if you are unwilling to engage in healthy conflict that will allow us to better understand each other, then you are saying that you do not want a relationship with me because I'm letting you know that we have no relationship if we are unable to have healthy conflict. So that is a boundary that I have been setting in place. So part one is when you do this thing, it impacts me this way. Part two is the next time you do this thing, or if you do this thing, then I will respond by doing this other thing. So we've talked about the mindset behind boundaries, the method that you use to set boundaries. Next, let's talk about maintaining boundaries because this is important. This is very, very important. You need to stick to your word. So if you tell someone something like, if you cheat on me again, then I am going to leave you. And then they cheat on you again and you don't leave them, then that means your word is worth nothing and your boundary is worth nothing. Not only is it is it worth nothing, but you have communicated a message to yourself that you are not worthy of respect. You have let yourself down and your confidence and your self-esteem is going to take a plummet. It's going to like it's gonna crash and burn if you say to someone if you call me out of my name then I will walk away and they call you out of your name and you just sit there and you continue to engage with them you have let yourself down you have allowed someone to cross your boundary you don't want to do that so the one of like the most important part of of boundaries is making sure that you maintain that boundary. And if someone cannot respect that boundary, then they are choosing to forfeit their position in your life. I don't care if it's your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy, your granddaddy, your grandmama, your papa. I don't care who it is. They could have pushed you out of their hoo-ha. You could have lived in their womb for nine months. If they are choosing not to respect your boundary, then they have chosen to forfeit, whether it's your presence in, in their life, maybe it's just your presence in that conversation, they've chosen to deal with whatever con consequence you have set in place because you, you, you let them know, you told them ahead of time, and they chose to do it anyways, which means they don't respect you. Do you really want to be surrounded by people who don't respect you? Is that who you want in your life? Because if you're surrounded by people who don't respect you, guess who else is not going to respect you? you're not gonna respect you and you have to live with you. So I think you might wanna respect yourself if you can manage it. Okay, warnings. This is not gonna feel good. This is gonna feel shitty more than likely. Again, especially if, you, if you're breaking generational curses, just expect that once you start setting boundaries, you're gonna shake some shit up. Okay, you're gonna wonder if you're doing the right thing. You're gonna wonder, well, maybe I'm being too hard or maybe I'm being too harsh or maybe I should have given them another chance. Are you trying to break generational curses or are you trying to repeat the same patterns? Do you want better for yourself? Do you want healthier for yourself? Or do you want to continue being fearful and scared and insecure and second guessing yourself and not feeling good enough? If you want better for yourself, then when those thoughts come about, did I do the right thing? And should I have just given them another chance? And maybe I'm being too harsh. When those thoughts come, ask yourself the kind of life you want for yourself. Ask yourself the kind of person that you want to be. Ask yourself the kind of love that you want to feel. Do you want to feel loved and accepted and respected for who you are? Or do you just want some warm bodies around so as not to be too uncomfortable in this moment? Do you want to have the opportunity to heal and to grow and to be who you know you are, but who you feel like you you just haven't been able to reach. Like I just haven't been able to reach that version of me. I haven't been able to, 
to get to her. I know she's there somewhere inside of me, but I haven't been able to pull her out. Do you want that version of you to stay hidden or do you want that version of you to manifest and to come out and to feel safe enough and loved enough and brave and courageous enough to show herself? At the end of the day, the choice is yours. What I'm going to tell you is you deserve everything. So set these boundaries, man. Set the boundaries. Don't doubt yourself. You got it. It's going to be hard, but you can do this. Watch the next video or not. It's up to you. Either way, I'm glad I got to spend this time with you.